which uh, now we have got the evidence about SGLT2, uh, you know, improving the outcomes in heart failure patients. Uh, how frequently do you use SGLT2 uh, to treat heart failure in non-diabetic patients? Of course, in diabetes, you know, it's absolutely, there is no patient, you have to use the drug. And in fact, now, uh, as far as we are concerned as diabetologists, unless there is a contraindication, we give this group of drugs to each and every person because it has got renal and cardiac and, you know, so many, you know, out-of-the-box things which are coming. So, GLP-1 and SGLT-2 for us have become very, very important therapies and, you know, leaving aside the sulfonylureas, which were the common drugs which were used previously. But now with all the evidence, uh, do you tend to use SGLT-2 as a primary therapy or as an add-on therapy in all your patients or many of your patients, even though they may not be diabetic, but they are having heart failure? Angel and then Dr. Chawan and then Dr. Kamal. Angel, you are muted. You are muted. Angel, you have to unmute. Yeah. So, uh, SGLT2, uh, we have started to using in some of the patients, but still, uh, it's about to be a primary therapy, right? So, because we have a wide experience with the drug that we are using since long. So, this is a new drug that we have started in selected patients, basically who are diabetic. And a few of my patients who are non-diabetic, they are on SGLT2 inhibitors. But uh, still, I am a little bit hesitant to use it as a uh, first-line drug. So, this is my take. Yeah, see, my take is usually nowadays because of so much robust evidence and even personal experience, I put almost my 99% patient on SGLT2 blockers, either dapagliflozin or empagliflozin, irrespective of whether they have diabetes or no diabetes, irrespective of LV ejection fraction. It has to be heart failure. It's like if this ejection fraction, if patient has clinical evidence of heart failure or elevated uh, uh, anti-pro BNP, I put almost all patients on one of the SGLT2 blockers. Only problem is 10 to 20 percent of my patient, they get urinary infections or they cannot tolerate it. So, especially elderly lady with diabetes, many times we avoid SGLT2 blockers. So, in, during perioperative period or the, whenever there is any infection, we avoid them. But my use has now increased significantly as a prior. I don't consider it add-on therapy. It is started as early as possible. And I think after Kamal, Ronak also should answer the, his his views. So I, I, I will just tell that initially when the data is coming, I have also started using it. But you are very right that urinary tract infection is very uh, very problematic. So uh, that's why I have to curtail my use because basically whenever we give to female, nah, they are at yeah, very uh, cool. somewhat high risk of developing this. So if you, if I have a heart failure patient, very sick heart failure patient in the hospital who is having urinary catheters, for example, urinary catheters. I usually avoid starting SGLT2 blocker. Yeah. No, I start it up front. I don't hesitate to use it, especially when the patient is non-diabetic. More so because we know that um, uh, in non-diabetic, there's going to be very minimal glycosuria in heart failure. And that's why the risk of UTI, if you look at in the DAPA-HF trial, or even if you look at the Ampere reduced, the incidence of UTI was as good as placebo or as bad as placebo. So, I, the good advantage of using this therapy in non-diabetic heart failure is straight away, there is no side effect at all, except uh, even when you look at the euglycemic ketosis incidence, it's equal to placebo in non-diabetic sub -arm. So, it's only the trouble is when you're dealing with a diabetic heart failure. So, it is indeed my one of the first pillars to add because uh, even if you have, uh, except the acute CKDs, I mean acute and chronic CKD, or acute worsening, AKI, not a CKD, where I would desist using for this. But even in CKD, when we know from DAPA CKD trial that this is going to be beneficial. Actually, I see a lot of patients <coughs> who have been seen by nephrologists and diabetologists, but have not been put on DAPA and they are not still in overt heart failure. I initiate them on DAPA. And then I tell them that you, when you meet uh, your nephrologist friend, just make sure that tell them that uh, Dr. Kamal initiated this and he was asking about this drug, what to do, and that drug is marked as a diuretic. And I tell them why, I mean, I, I tell the patient to ask the nephrologist how to titrate in light of me initiating DAPA in a CKD background, which is like CKD3. So I, I upfront use it. I have no hesitation to use, uh, not to use, I mean, there's no reason for me not to use it. I think uh, unless you have an acute pyelonephritis or a renal abscess or you have 
a, a very bad recurrent lower respiratory uh, lower uh, urinary tract infection uh, very, unlikely, very unlikely very unlikely, very unlikely. unlikely. so i i usually go and i just uh, I, I even for for a patient who comes with uh, fungal infections or even comes with uti i do rechallenge them i put them on a single dose try to make a send for a culture most of these are sterile most of them will be fungal i just have to tell them that drink lot of water always clean the genital parts after urination which is a big problem in india males don't uh, wash their genitals world over after urination unlike females and uh, uh, hydrate yourself well uh, 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 and that's that's the thing and and most of the patients actually do uh, do well on the rechallenging uh, with the sglt2 so they they are pretty safe drugs i mean i call them uh, the cheaper verisigvert now because like verisigvert you can use in hypotension renal failure that's some that's something that you can use uh, now with off uh, the the patent getting off dapa has become cheaper you should probably be initiating it much earlier probably even ahead of arni that's how uh, the proposal was uh, by the group which talked about initiating beta blocker as glt2 ahead of arni but again that's another topic uh, if we raise i i usually initiate all four in one go maybe one for half the dose or one fourth the dose at the first meet and up titrate all uh, because dapa you don't have to titrate beta and arni you can always and i take off diuretics i can why or take off diuretics barring mra uh, and state uh, instead continue with dapa we have data now from ampulse which talks about even in acute heart failure and that makes me more secure to start that therapy in acute setting as well uh, dr ronak your comments 